Guys, welcome to uh, Dirty's Custom Creations. We are outside behind my garage. We are outside on this beautiful day because we are in my backyard behind my garage, seeing what I have going on. This is my will be my latest update. So I've uh, done all, seen a lot of stuff in deep water cultures and strawberries and tomatoes. So that's just what I did. Right here we have a 10 gallon tote that I stuck uh, net cups in. I drilled a it took a hole saw, drilled three inch holes or actually it was three and a half inch net cups and put a three and a half inch holes in here slid the strawberries in put them in rocks and then put them in the six or the ten gallon tub which i only filled up with about six or about five gallons worth of water and here i have two air stones that are run off a big pump that i'll show you in a bit the water circulates in here they're growing nicely they've only been in here two days and there's already uh, white little tap roots starting to come out of the bottom, which I can't believe. I think that's ridiculous. They've just been here, been it's just they've just been here for two days, so it's quite interesting. Very dark, luscious green. We're starting to get uh, blossoms on there, so we'll see what happens. Uh, the nutrients in there have a transitional bloom for the or transitional. Um, it's called transitional period for the four series of hy of general hydroponics. And then next over, we have four four-gallon buckets full of deep water culture tomatoes. And these are all plants I got from Menards when they were on sale for super cheap. Like the strawberries were kind of like dying and stuff. I put them under my uh, grow light downstairs, got them back to health, and they were only like 75 cents a pop. These I bought like two do or um, a dozen for super cheap. So these have been in here for two days too there are some tiny roots starting to come out but i'm not going to pull them out because they are a pain to get back in because the ropes are holding it all up this is what i got set up the reason the bricks are on top of it because these lids do not seal right and i didn't want to buy another i didn't want to buy uh, more buckets so i just thought i'd use it and just put bricks on top of it to hold it down and the reason why all this netting's around here is because of our deer. The deer are terrible around here. They want to eat everything, so we have to put netting. So I have cherry netting on one side, big stakes to hold up to the tomatoes, and just regular chicken wire to keep them out from the back. And the reason the camera, everything looks bent in the camera is because I have it on, I'm using my GoPro. It's got a uh, fisheye lens. These buckets are all tied down with rope in here, so they, don't, they won't tip over or anything. Each one of these has a two inch air stone that is drilled in the top and goes down at the bottom. And these are all mixed up with four series, new, four uh, hydroponic series nutrients as well. There's a string that goes up to the top and just wraps around each plant just to hold them up. So these again have only been out here for two days. And this all goes back, to, I, each have, I have 10 feet of each tube. You wanna keep them length or the same length because otherwise the same amount of Otherwise, there won't be the same amount of air going to each air stone and will screw everything up. Uh, my air pump under here, I believe, is like a 900 and some gallon. There's only 30 bucks in my hydroponics store. It's this one. Hooked up. I had to put zip ties on here because the stuff kept falling off and that wasn't very good because it wasn't doing anything. Uh, let's see what we got here. 951 gallons per hour of air is what this one is rated at. Um, I have this electrical plug out here, and I have this over the top of it, just a crappy old bucket, which I need to get a new one. And I kind of waterproofed it to some degree too, so. But otherwise, it seems like it's working pretty well, so I'll keep you guys updated on how it goes and what I think about it, and yeah. I know it is really late in the summer to start growing, but whatever, right? Okay, I also want to tell you guys how I'm getting my water to my plants. I have a well water in my house, but it's horrible. It has around five to 700 parts per million of other crap in it, which I don't really know what is what it is, to be honest. So I can't really use that. It doesn't work very well. And the pH is like eight. So I have to use a crap ton of pH down to get it down. Get it down right. I was using dehumidifier water for my dehumidifiers that it would um, accumulate and I put in buckets or whatever. And I'd use that, but I only have so much because the AC is only on so much. So you can, you can only get so much out of that. So what I did, was took my old so water softener bucket, huge bucket, the ones that, get, that hold the salt on it, rinse out all every good and everything, filled it up with actual city water, chlorinated city water, took that air pump, ran it in here for about 24 hours, got all the chlorine gas out of it, and the, other, the chlorine, I should say, and then I used this for my plants instead. So that's what I'm using for water now. 
That's the cheapest way besides getting an RO water system, which I want, but I can't exactly afford right now because this guy keeps breaking the bank. Okay, so we are uh, downstairs now, checking out my pepper grill I have going on, my drip, drip pepper system. Uh, waiting for this light to kick in here. We are under a 400 watt high pressure sodium. As you can see, it get all nice and yellow on you. So what I have grown here, my other videos you've just probably seen, which are um, jalapenos and bell peppers. Uh, when I was growing them, I put on a website that I was having problems with the plants didn't seem big enough. And my dripper lines were clogging up and stuff. And I was telling them I was using four Nova nutrients, which was apparently st stuff people don't use. And um, they told me to switch to the four series, which I did. I cleaned all my nutrients out, cleaned all the dripper systems out. And I switched to that, and it seems like it seemed, the transition went pretty well. Everything's growing quite nicely now. I do have peppers compared to last time. They're much bigger. Like, there is a nice bell pepper. I mean, it's a pretty good size, not going to lie. I have a lot of blooms or blossoms on the other ones. I cut a lot off because I wanted the plants to grow bigger first before they actually got more fruit on them. Uh, here's another bell pepper we got growing. See here, this camera's light's kind of funny. That's a nice one. We have three growing right there, which are probably just gonna run into each other and make a mess. Uh, I got another one. We got another two back there. Uh, we have some jalapenos growing down there too, which you can't see at all. Hold on a second. Sneak it through my plants here. So there's a jalapeno, which you can see. Thank you. Uh, I got two jalapenos on there and more blossoms to come yet. I am on the light bloom stage formula for this. So, I mean, everything seems to be working out pretty well. And I had my light dim before at 300 watts because I thought it was too much. But apparently it was not enough light, so I bumped it up back to 400 watts. I got another pepper over here. I have a fair amount so far, so I mean, it's working out pretty well. Not bad. Oh, yeah, I show you some roots, too. These are the plant roots. Nice and white and pretty luscious. Not bad, not bad at all. This one has more. They're starting to get kind of brown and dry, I notice now. That's not very good. Maybe that one's not getting dripped. Maybe that dripper line's clogged. I'll check that out. Water temp is staying around uh, 68 degrees. Not bad at all. So, yeah. So let me know what you guys think. Like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. Let me know.